Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, uh, my very dear uh, students, uh, learners, teachers, my friends, audience, my mentors, peers. It's indeed a great uh, honor for me that uh, I'm receiving continuously a subscription and appreciation from all of you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all uh, high rewards for this. I understand that in my humble capacity, I'm trying to share mostly my experience and at the same time learning from your experience. Uh, so today, uh, the fourth lecture of the project procurement pro management, we will start and I start with the uh, holy verses from the Quran that Uzubillahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Rabbana wa la tuakhizna in nasina wa akhtana. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna islam kama hamiltahu ala ladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammil lama la taqat lana biwa afwanna wa akhfil lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana wa ansulna ala qawmika kafirin. Sadaqallahu al-azim. I wish and pray that we all, uh, all, uh, of you are safe, healthy, and taking all the uh, necessary uh, preventive measures uh, to make sure that the social distancing is ensured and you are keeping uh, yourself uh, secure from the COVID-19 and the spread of this coronavirus. Now coming to the uh, fourth lecture, which is purely again, again uh, about the contract management. It has got two parts. In the first part, we will discuss uh, for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes, we will discuss the contract, the salient attributes of the contract, and then we will discuss that how the contract management has been uh, described in PEPRA regulation 2004. So this will make the uh, contract management and the contract, uh, the PEPRA regulations combined. Uh, the uh, contract is basically, if we define this as an agreement uh, between the two parties, which is enforceable by law. So the contract is basically a legal document which describes the relationship between two or more people. Uh, this is a, a formalized document, certainly, and uh, in the last uh, of my lecture, uh, I described uh, the one of the lengthy, uh, the most lengthiest. Uh, Quranic course in which the contract is being spelled out in a very appropriate, in a very comprehensive manner. So uh, the contract has been added advantage of forcing owners to define their requirements, organize, arrange their thinking, and make a commitment to their project. So definitely the contract is very important on both sides. Now, the uh, uh, if we look at the uh, word contractum, which is uh, basically a Latin word, and the contract has been derived from the contracting, which uh, which means that uh, drawn together. So this is basically an understanding or uh, uh, an agreement between two parties, which is drawn together by mutual consent, and we describe normally the uh, the responsibilities of both the parties uh, on both sides. Uh, it's a voluntary voluntary agreement uh, enforceable at law, which is meant between two or more parties, whereby rights are required by one party to act or for bareness by others. So uh, the uh, contract normally describes the uh, uh, liabilities, the obligations, the role and responsibility of both the parties to the contract. And uh, this is a binding on both sides. Uh, it is a voluntary in the sense that uh, it, it cannot be forced, rather the two parties would come to uh, uh, through a process, and we will discuss that that process is really very important to drive uh, uh, an agreement. Now, the agreement is basically a contract is an, a legal document that it is enforceable by law, and it is uh, certainly uh, a legal document. So, it it should have all the legal protection, and it should comply with the uh, uh, rules and laws of the land. According to the Construction Specification Institute, CSI, manual of practice, a contract is a promise or set of promises for the breach of which the law gives a remedy of the performance of which 
and of her performance of which the law recognizes a duty. The agreement is reached by the acceptance of an offer made by one party to do something for the other as a stipulated consideration. So when we look at the, uh, the components of a contract, we have the offer that there must be an offer from the seller, uh, and this offer may be from the procuring agency, and uh, there must be a consideration. This offer should have some consideration, uh, which means that there should be uh, some kind of business involved. There should be uh, some meaningful uh, uh, business must be there. And this should be acceptance that the other party must accept that offer. And there should be a legal purpose that the contract is not an agreement uh, for some illegal things or illegal actions. So definitely any action or any act which is not covered by the law cannot be uh, drawn in the contract. And finally, there should be a legal capacity in both the parties, with both the parties to accept the uh, tender or uh, the contract. For instance, uh, it, uh, the legal capacity would mean that a person who is insolvent cannot be a uh, party to the contract, a person who is uh, a, a minor, for instance, uh, a person who is insane, uh, a person is having, who is not having uh, the capacity uh, uh, to bear the uh, contract, he cannot or she cannot be party to the contract. Uh, it is designed to formalize the contract. It brings together all other do contract documents by reference to them and its legal instrument verifying the contract. So the agreement, which is basically a contract, uh, uh, we discussed that contract is an agreement which is enforceable by law. And the agreement would include uh, basically all other documents of the uh, contract, which ultimately becomes part of the contract. The construction... <laughs> Contracts, uh, the success of the projects often judge on the construction performance because this activity is highly visible. The success of projects also influenced by the accuracy in detail of the documentation, the understanding between parties and acceptance of their particular responsibilities, how professionally and accurately the day-to-day -day, uh, matters are administered, and how complex our contractual problems are resolved. So, uh, this is uh, the uh, contract that uh, the contract should be. Uh, looking after all the possible events and all the possible uh, scenarios which we can see in the uh, in the uh, construction. Uh, it is uh, used in all phases of the project. Certainly, the contract covers all the project life cycle. Certainly, right from uh, the start to the end, and all each and every component of the project and subcomponents must be uh, very carefully uh, covered by the contract. Now, uh, for a good contract, we normally say that a good contract should be care carefully considered, that all important uh, issues must have been spelled out in the contract, and the contract should, uh, as a matter of fact, provide a recipe for uh, all kinds of solutions. Then it should be expressed clearly that um, uh, there should not be ambiguity, there should not be uh, something vague, everything and every sentence which we give in the contract should be very clearly defined and it should not leave any room for conflict or for any ambiguity. It should be time tested certainly uh, most of the contracts uh, and that's why we think that the FedEx contract document is one of the most widely used in the world uh, because it provides a very comprehensive uh, solution. So it should be time tested, well tested by the organization and then it should be comprehensive that it provides a holistic uh, uh, I mean, approach to all the important aspects of the project, and then it should be fair, it should uh, draw justice, and as we discussed this morning in the Holy Verses of God, that it should be drawn in justice, so it should be fair, it should give uh, uh, justice to both sides, it should be balanced, that it should not uh, go beyond the capacity of both the parties in terms of performance, and for, for finally, all the projects should have been covered by this uh, contract. Now, if we look at the Pakistan Engineering Council, there are about seven or eight set of documents uh, which the PEC has drawn after approval of the uh, uh, ECNIC, uh, Executive Committee of National Economic Council. It's not ECNIC, it's ECNIC. And uh, these are standard bidding form and ENM works and then uh, smaller contract consultancy service, the time bus assignment. Uh, then we have uh, for engineering consultants, which is lump sum assignment, and then we have standard form of contract for engineering consultancy, smaller projects. So these are some of the, uh, and there is again 
the uh, design and build consultant consultancy document also uh, design and build uh, contract documents now the contract administration basically involves that we uh, we implement all the important uh, aspects throughout the of the contract throughout the uh, life cycle of the project that requires planning a uh, preparation of procurement documents submission of bids evaluation and award uh, is of, uh, <laughs> so we should have a very uh, effective contract administration so there must be necessary step for kickoff or uh, uh, address ensuring timely delivery of good goods and services there must be key dates defined by the contract all the deliverables are inspected and checked for acceptable necessary acceptance procedures are followed and minimize the risk of overruns by providing timely information and results so a contract management and the effectiveness of contract management definitely define these uh, steps uh, we must ensure that all necessary amendments are taken care of there is smooth administration in resolution of disputes determination uh, absolutely necessary is effected in accordance with the provision of the contract that uh, there is smooth country contract close out and there is a uh, necessary documentation uh, throughout the duration of contract is provided completing contractor performance report after the completion of the project so we have uh, to develop the uh, project reports very carefully once the project has been uh, completed and contract is a partnership with rights and obligations that must be met by both the parties to achieve the intended goals and uh, certainly it is not aimed at finding faults but rather identifying solutions to problem that the parties face in the course of achieving the objective so this is very important that the contract should facilitate both the side it should not be something uh, uh, which is supposed to find the faults with each other rather it should be this uh, providing the solution to all kind of circumstances and we should focus on the development and the execution of project now the uh, processes there are very uh, eight important processes which i am not going to detail but certainly uh, these processes are very important that uh, first of all uh, we uh, need to have a contract commencement uh, in which we uh, start with a meeting and we discuss uh, the uh, all the timelines the teams the subcontractors and all this this is really very uh, important uh, kick off meeting in which we describe and we identify the rules uh, we uh, identify the line of command and uh, com communication we also identify the the uh, reporting uh, mechanism and so on then we have the contract tracking that we should uh, once the contract uh, baseline has been defined and the milestones have also been defined along the timeline we need to have a tra tracking uh, process in which we see that the project is going according to the agreed uh, contract plan and then uh, we uh, should uh, check the deliverables uh, so that they are according to the uh, contract and according to the specification and then if there is any modification required in the contract there must be a mechanism and we should uh, follow that and then if there is some disputes then we should resolve these disputes through different processes given in the contract and then uh, the closing of contract really very important that we need to have administrative closing of the contracts and then uh, once the contracts have been closed then we have the performance reports and then we have the records and archives that how the uh, various important decisions have been taken in the contract now the tracking uh, is very important i'll not read it but certainly the tracking of contract would uh, involve uh, the commencement recordings follow-up the contract maintenance monitoring of compliances deliverable management contract histories monitoring the warranties insurances and bonds regarding of contract modifications variations and uh, things like that uh, the contract deliverables uh, again is very important that uh, once we are having certain well-defined deliverables we should have a safety uh, at work during construction and all these really very important now the uh, role of the engineer uh, who is supposed to be a judge between the contractor and the consultant uh, and uh, the employer uh, uh, and uh, a person which is expected to uh, support both the parties to the contract for the smooth uh, execution and to provide solution to the problems at the site. So basically, the uh, the engineer under the FedEx is basically uh, uh, 
uh, is it expertise supervise the contractors activities at site the function is called the engineer in fedex based contracts or a prime manager in small works contracts he must be duly authorized to monitor and be empowered to instruct the contractors on behalf of client so basically he is uh, the agent of the client not his employer but he uh, is giving the instructions to uh, the contractors on behalf of the client the engineer will not be able to act without the express approval or delegation of authority required by such decisions so this uh, uh, these decisions shall be given to him his identity and authority should be stated in any works bidding document and must be stated in the civil contract so normally the printed document has spelled out the roles and obligations of the uh, engineer the engineer has the overall responsibility for on site monitoring supervision and approval of works is deliverable deliverables on behalf of the client so he is the agent of the client to make sure that the various uh, deliverable has been delivered uh, within the given time now the uh, roles and responsibility of the engineer uh, are quite important that he will familiarize himself with the terms and condition of the contract he will ensure that the notice of possession of site and commencement of work is issued in timely manner he will also ensure that the prior to the commencement the works and kick off meetings have been done and the pre bid conference uh, pre uh, commencement conferences have been done after signing the contract he, uh, he will also uh, ensure that regular monitoring of quality and progress is done on site uh, on behalf of the client and uh, he will also verify the progress of works he will also authenticate the work for payment and so on so the regular project on site inspections the progress of design and submittals whether planned physical works meet the necessary design requirements whether appropriate safety procedures are followed and the necessary insurances are in place so all these important uh, attributes of the contract will have to be monitored and evaluated by the engineer then he prepares the reports on work in progress uh, daily reports and definitely weekly and monthly reports which are then sent to the client and the sponsors and then he monitors the dis and updates the project schedules uh, in consultation with the project manager and then he prepare the interim payment certificates ipcs and submit for payments uh, without the other other authorization and verification of the um, uh, the engineer the payment cannot be process so this is very important that uh, all the payment must be very clear uh, very uh, evaluated by the contractors uh, by the engineer he is also responsible for the change in specification and drawings he will lies with the procurement agent fiscal agent uh, that is the treasurer or the finance manager and the procurement agency in our case the directorate of works notify the contractor of any defects or forms such checking the notification does not affect the contract responsibility keeps a copy of the contract along with all changes modifications maintains a record of inspections and from the contractor when said unsatisfactory performance is noted make certain that all emergency situations are attended and resolved as quickly as possible he will inform the prior program uh, our project manager when differences of opinion uh, or interpretation of contract requirement exist between the engineer and the contractor which cannot be mutually resolved at this instance obtain drawing technical bulletins operational and maintenance manuals warranty schemes and other related data prepare final deficiency list ensure that the contract rectify deficiencies verifies completeness of manuals and operating instructions verify correctness of guarantees and final account communicates on all contractual matters with the prime uh, project manager uh, and uh, the procurement uh, manager or procurement uh, agent uh, on the site the engineer is basically having a, a role as a technical expert uh, and his role is to giving the decision opinion considered expressing satisfaction or approval value determination of the value of the work done except where otherwise provided with contract the employer shall appoint the engineer therefore just the employer has a contractual relationship with the engineers and the contractor is not such contractual relationship however the engineer is not the employer's representative he is the agent but not representative so he is not supposed only to take care of the interest of employer rather he will provide 
a justice between the employer and the contractors and uh, on both sides, he will try to ensure that the contract is uh, employed. The engineer may be considered as agent of the employer. The engineer shall exercise his decision impartially. And if the contractor is damaged by the decision of the engineer and if the engineer is appointed according to the strategic condition of contract, the appropriate solution for the contract is, is resorting to arbitration in accordance with the class 67 of FedEx. And the latest version uh, of the green, uh, the red book, the, uh, the dispute education board or DAVE has been also spelled out instead of uh, arbitration. Uh, contract modification procedures, uh, there must be a well-defined contract modification procedure. If there is any change in the specification, in the time, in the quantity, uh, then this kind of contract modification or change must be uh, uh, properly given in the contract document. And in the fitting document, there is a well-defined clause uh, which uh, speaks about the, um, uh, the uh, changing in the contract document. We will discuss later. So this is just uh, some examples that how change in the contract can be affected in case of change in the uh, duration of the project or change in the specification, or maybe there is uh, uh, some change in the quantity and there may be change in the design. So there may be different situations in which we can uh, make some changes in the contract and there must be a well-placed uh, and well-defined uh, procedure in the, in the contract, uh, which, can, uh, uh, which can definitely tell us uh, the, uh, the uh, mechanism for affecting these changes. This is very interesting that uh, as a principle, contract modifications are undesirable and should be avoided as far as possible, mainly by ensuring that the contract terms and conditions are clear, accurate, and complete before entering into the contract. But certainly uh, there will be changes at site, uh, there will be changes in the specification, there will be changes in the design. So you cannot st stop the change process, but it should be uh, kept in minimum. It should not be extensive. Changes would definitely create a lot of uh, or delays in the projects and also the cost tolerance. Uh, the contract modification process uh, is uh, there is uh, always a contract, uh, uh, the uh, modification committee or board. Uh, in the FedEx, there is a well defined process in which the contract change is, uh, is uh, ensured, and then we have the variation order or uh, change order is issued uh, to the contractor. Uh, or any change in the specification, price, quantity, uh, and many other things which we need to change at sites. This is just telling us a form, uh, which is a typical change contract form, a contract change form in which we normally have the proposed changes, but there are many other options and templates we can use. Uh, the uh, claim administration is basically uh, when uh, uh, the a disagreement on the compensation arises at site and uh, the payment which is due or the payment which is made to the contractor are not uh, acceptable, acceptable and there is a disagreement uh, between the two parties, then definitely it will lead to the claims. Uh, so the claim administration system is uh, documented, monitored and managed throughout the life cycle of the contract. If the contractor, consultant, supplier, or non-consultant uh, service provider cannot agree on claim, it may have to be handled through the dispute resolution procedures, maybe uh, the arbitration, or we may go to the dispute education boards. Conversely, successful defense of claims is also dependent on uh, the same part of the client. Claims are most common uh, in construction, and these uh, may come from the scope changes, uh, claims, different site conditions, construction delays claims, force major claims, for example, in the present circumstance, we have the coronavirus and we have the COVID-19. So there are a lot of claims under the force major which we can expect in the times to come because the closure of project and the delay in the project was not in the part of contractors and the government has decided to lock down. So in these conditions, certainly we have the force major where the uh, the condition or circumstances are beyond the control of human capacity. Uh, there might be acceleration claims when the project is completed well before time. Some of the FedEx uh, provides the provision, design and construction defect claims, and suspension and termination claims. So we will discuss some of these claims in later phase. 
the Fittick Red Book states that if the employer does not respond within the time frame defined in the subclass, either party may consider that the claim is rejected when the engineer and either party may refer to such claim to date, which is dispute education board in cardiacs with the subclass 20.4. The DEB is dispute education board appointed by both parties in accordance with the procedure set out in the contract to resolve disputes that arise in the course of execution of the contract. In the Red Book of FedEx, uh, this is uh, given that right from the beginning of the project, the parties will identify the date, uh, which may be uh, uh, one or three, or maybe a uh, number of odd people, uh, odd number of people. In case of any, any dispute um, on payment or claim will be referred to the day. The contract termination is a, a situation which may arise in different circumstances when the project is, uh, for example, terminated due to breach of the contract, uh, maybe by agreement of performance that both the uh, sides have uh, completed their obligations and now they uh, want to close the contract successfully. Uh, so there is also kind of contract termination and finally by frustration that uh, there is a funding issue, there is delay in the decision making. So in that case also, uh, the termination clauses are usually inserted in contracts to give the right to any of the parties to terminate the contract provided sufficient notice of impending terminations given to other party depending on the specific provision in the contract. So. Uh, the uh, contract provides uh, uh, sufficient uh, uh, examples for uh, uh, termination. Uh, now, the reasons for termination, uh, for example, it fails to comply with the, uh, if the contractor play, uh, play, uh, uh, fails to comply with the provision of 4.2, that uh, 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 the notice to correction is given or the performance security is not provided, uh, abandon the work and demonstrate the intention not to continue. So in that case also, without reasonable excuse, fail to proceed with the works in accordance class eight, that commencement delays and suspensions. To comply with the notice issued under subclass uh, rejection and subclass 7.6 remedial work within 28 days after receiving it, subcontracts the whole of the works are designed or assigned the contract without the required agreement becomes bankrupt or insolvent, goes into liquidation, gives or offers to give directly, indirectly, to any person, any bribe, gift, gratuity, commission, or other thing of value is in inducement or reward. So under these uh, circumstances, then the, uh, the, the contract is subject to termination. And in this case, uh, if the, any of these events happen, then definitely the employer will give a 14 days notice to the contractor and we terminate the contract and expel the contractor from the site. However, in case of five and six, that is uh, bankruptcy and offer of commission or bribery, it can be taken, an immediate action should be taken uh, to, resolve, uh, to terminate the contract. Uh, once the uh, contract is terminated, the contractor shall then leave the site and deliver any required good, uh, all contractor document and other design document made uh, for him to be engineer. After termination, the employer may complete the work and arrange for any other entities to do so. So if there is any incomplete part of the work to which uh, the contractor has been uh, uh, has been paid or the, uh, the, the work has been left incomplete, then the employer may uh, engage another contractor and do the work at the risk and cost of the contractor. The employer may proceed in accordance with the subclass 2.5 employer's claim. If there is any claim uh, which is due, it should be recovered. Withhold further payments to the contractor and the cost of completion or remitting of any defects. So if there is any work which is incomplete or defective, it has to be rectified at the cost of contractor who has, uh, uh, who has uh, uh, defaulted. The damages for delay and uh, completion, if any, and other costs incurred by the employer. So if there is any uh, 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 any uh, damage due to delay in the project has to be recovered from the contractor. Recover from the contractor any losses and damages incurred by the employer and any extra cost the works after allowing for any sum due. So you know, under such circumstances then uh, after recovering all these losses, damages and extra cost, the employer shall pay uh, the balance, any amount which is balanced to the contractor. Uh, 
In case of uh, suspension of work, for example, if the site uh, dispute is there, if the payment is not released by the government, if there is funding issue, if there is delay in decision about the site, uh, uh, site selection and things like that, which are normally lead to the suspension of the uh, project. And in this case, in such case, uh, the engineer fails to make interim payment, the contractor after receiving notice are not less than 21 days may suspend the board. After receiving payments, the contractor must immediately resume the work. If the contractor suffered delays and incur costs due to delay, the contractor shall give notice to the engineer for extension in time and payment of any such cost plus reasonable profit. So if there is any cost which is due, uh, it should be paid to the contractor. Uh, termination by the contractor. Now, there are some, some, some uh, circumstances in which the contractor can also go for termination of the contract. And in this case, uh, for example, uh, if the uh, suspension is continuing for more than 42 days uh, and the payments are not received by the contractor, then the contractor can terminate the contract. The engineer fails to issue payment certificate after 56 days, but the payment to the contractor has been delayed beyond 56 days, then the contractor can terminate the project. Interim payment is not received within 42 days of expiry of the time of payment. Uh, the employer, uh, substantially fails to perform his obligation on the contract. A prolonged suspension effect, the whole of the work is described the prolonged suspension, uh, which is uh, for longer period of time. In any of these events or circumstances, the contractor may upon giving 14 days notice to the employer terminate the contract. The contractor's election to terminate the contract shall not prejudice any other right of the contractor and the contract are otherwise. So if there is any payment, which is uh, to be paid to the contractor, it must be paid to him because the right of determination should not create any prejudice against him. Uh, after the termination of contract by contractor, uh, he will cease further work except for such work he may have been instructed by the engineers for the protection of life and property, hand over contract document plan, uh, etc., for which payment has been received and remove all goods except required by for safety of works and after termination by contractor, return performance security to contractor, pay the contractor under class, uh, which is optional termination, and pay to the contractor any loss of profit due to this termination. Finally, the contract closure, which is the last uh, and very important part of the, that once the work has been uh, terminated by default or terminated by completion or termin terminated by suspension. The contract closure involves both product verification. Was all work complete correctly and satisfactorily in accordance with the contract? Administrative closeout, updating the records of the uh, to reflect the uh, final result and archiving of such information for future. The contract terms and conditions may prescribe specific procedure for contract closeout. A early termination of contract is a special case of contract closure. Contract is deemed to have closed, uh, been completed when all services have been rendered, all articles, material, and reports have been delivered and accepted, all administrative actions have been taken and accomplished, and final payment has been made to the contractor. So this will uh, certainly then lead to the, uh, to the uh, closure of the contract. Uh, the, uh, Certain documents which are really very important during the closure of the uh, contract, for example, the contract itself with all the support and schedules and modifications, approved contract changes, contractor, uh, consultant, supplier, and non consultant service provide developed technical documentation, performance reports, final documents such as invoices and payment records, result of any contract related inspection and acceptance letters, record of disputes, if any outcome of their uh, resolution. A complete set of index records should be prepared for inclusion with the final project records. Now, the contract negotiation, uh, major minor alteration to the technical detail of the statement of requirements, reduction of quantities are limiting the scope for budgetary reason, a minor amendment to the special condition of contract, finalizing pay payment uh, arrangement, mobilization arrangement, agreeing final delivery, methodology and clarifying, but definitely uh, the negotiation cannot uh, relax either party from the major uh, uh, obligations of the contract. Now, 
Now, negotiation is not allowed, uh, for example, to substantially change the specification, to materially alter the terms and condition, primarily the purpose of reducing prices, to substantially alter anything which is found a crucial and deciding the factor, uh, propose unit rates for staff, month, and reimbursable, since they have already been factor of selection, so it cannot be changed at this stage. Before entering into the contract, in case of consultancy, any special problem found during the review of the proposal uh, can be addressed to negotiation, deliberation on the terms of reference, consultant comments on the scope of services, methodology, staffing, implementation plan, and so on. Procuring agency input uh, on proposal of special conditions and uh, uh, the procuring agency. Now, the public security, uh, uh, where the contact involves access to the confidential information, a procuring agency shall notify the tender for the security of classification of contract and element of the contract or any subsequent revision in such security classification. The tender shall prior to the commencement of the contract safeguard all classified elements of the contract and shall provide and maintain a system within its own organization and an authorized a uh, representative of the armed um, security or police force shall have the right to inspect the procedure, methods, and facilities utilized by the tender uh, or the compliance by the tender with the security requirements under the contract. So there must be some special provisions uh, uh, of the public security relating to the uh, uh, tender. Change in comparison and constitution of giant venture consortium or any similar association. The composition of the constitution of the giant venture shall not be altered without the prior consent of the employer and in accordance with the provision of the uh, following sub rules, the sub rules which are given in the paper document. Uh, the uh, paper also uh, give high emphasis on the uh, e uh, procurement, and uh, the e procurement has become. Uh, really important. So the e-procurement or the online procurement is basically becoming now the most important. Uh, so the PEPRA uh, 2020 uh, new modified rules are giving rooms for the e-provisions of the e-procurement also. Uh, this is uh, a list of uh, different uh, important attributes of the e-procurement, uh, which is very important uh, once you are going for the e-procurement to be in place. So the readers are requested to read it out. Uh, then the clarifications and payment process, dispute resolution payment, uh, we have discussed already that uh, the contract has a provision for these kind of, these kind of things. Uh, the arbitration, we uh, discussed that in the earlier uh, document of FedEx, that if there is any dispute between the contractor and the engineer or employer, then definitely will be referred to, referred to arbitration. Uh, the arbitration uh, will be done definitely based on the Arbitration Act. And uh, the Red Book uh, of uh, FedEx provides the Dispute Education Board or Day Board. So it's a solution for the dispute resolution. Finally, uh, this is, uh, I think, the last slide of the FedEx document that the FedEx, uh, sorry, of the PEPRA document that the PEPRA regulations has override eff effect on all other laws. And uh, if there is any conflict, then definitely the PEPRA rules would be valid. Uh, and uh, provided the prevailing rules and procedure will remain applicable only for procurement of goods, services, and works for which notice for invitation of bids has been issued prior to commencement of these rules. So if this, uh, before the commencement of these rules, if there is any uh, procurement which has already been initiated, therefore it will not be affected, but certainly all other procurement and decisions will be affected by the, uh, the uh, this uh, latest uh, version of the of the PEPRO document, and that is what we call is overriding effect. So all other laws uh, before this shall uh, uh, shall be superseded by this uh, uh, um, PEPRO rules. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this was the last uh, lecture of this series, and I'm uh, really thankful for your patience to be with us in all these four lectures. Thank you very much. I have a nice time, and may Allah, sub uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, give us all uh, safety and long life with Iman and maybe we in our family are blessed with peace and of the protection. Thank you very much.